This is the third video in a series about this Model 15 Teletype. Today we're going to use this as the operator's console for a vintage Altair 8800 computer. Now this Teletype's much younger brother, the Model 33, was used extensively back in the early days of uh, microcomputers with Altairs and MSIs and others. It was a console, it was a mass storage device, and of course it was also the printer for the system. Now, the Model 15, however, isn't nearly so well suited to computers as the Model 33 was. And the details of why that's the case, we went over in the previous video. If you haven't watched that video, I'd recommend that you go ahead and watch that. But in short, the issues are that the data encoding is a 5-bit encoding instead of the more common 7-bit ASCII that computers, especially microcomputers, expected. Um, also ran at 45 and a half baud, which is kind of a non-standard rate, although frankly that wouldn't have been a showstopper in the day. Um, and then finally, the electrical interface uses voltages and currents that are 10 times beyond what was typically used with computers, even in the 60s and 70s. And so no matter what, if you're going to use this with a computer, you're going to have to have some sort of interface in between this device and the computer to handle the translation of the data and to handle the, um, the electrical interface differences. In addition to the translation, there's also missing characters as well. So the ASCII character set has some characters that aren't present in the type basket of the Model 15 or on the keyboard, and yet those characters are used or are important for operating the computer. So we have to have a way to um, type those characters that don't exist and print them as well. So that adds a bit to the complexity. Now the fact that this doesn't work well with the computer really isn't that surprising. This was introduced in 1930 which was long before commercial computer, computer products were uh, available on the market, of course. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do a video cut. I'll get this turned on, and uh, we'll go ahead and boot and run CPM and see what that's like to use a Model 15 as an operator's console for a vintage Altair computer. All right, I've got the teletype up and running, and I have it connected over to the Altair using the interface board. You can see the keyboard loop and the printer loop down there. And coming out of that on the phone wire is our RS-232 connection with a modular DB25 hooked into the back of the Altair. We're going to boot and run CPM. I mean, insert the floppy. This is running on good old giant 8-inch floppies. Reset the machine. Examine the disk bootloader from, which is at FF00, and hit run. So as I do, then uh, you'll hear it popping up on the telephone. All right, so right off the bat, you can see one character that CPM uses that's not present in the Model 15 type basket. Normally that's a greater than sign after the A prompt. Um, I have it substituting to a right parenthesis, which seems to work pretty well for the most part. Um, whoops. Let's do a directory. And right off the bat, you can see this is going to take a very long time. So you might say, well, I shouldn't have done that because I've got a whole bunch of files that will take all day. So what you need to do is type a control C. Well, there is no control C. So this is um, one of the sequences that I've had to make a way to type in keys that don't exist on the keyboard. So all these start with a blank key. There's blank C. That's a control C. All right, and you can see that we've stopped and come back to our front. All right, so blank C is control C. Blank X is control X. Blank Z is control Z. Those are all pretty common control characters that were needed in CPM. Um, there's also other characters we need that aren't on the keyboard. For example, asterisk, which is the wildcard. Like if you wanted to do a directory of asterisk.com, there's no way to type that. So that's blank A. Um, equal sign is blank E. Plus sign is blank P. Uh, things like that had to be done in order to make this work. So for example, let's say we want to do a directory of all com files starting with the letter M. We normally do D-I-R-M asterisk.com. So let me do that. So here's where I want the asterisk after the M. So I do blank A. And I have it print a dollar sign in place of the asterisk. Now I could have used like an escape sequence like Unix, a slash 
A for asterisk or something. But quite often these characters are used uh, printed repeatedly or in columns. And if I use anything more than one character, things won't align or look the same. So um, I've decided to substitute a character for each thing. Dollar sign is not uncommon wildcard character either. So that kind of mentally worked fine for me. All right, so we got M dollar sign uh, or asterisk dot and let's do all comms. type around the, this uh, tripod so it's kind of difficult it was already hard to type all right so there's all our our com files to start with an m so this was m asterisk.com cpm sees the asterisk it needs i see a dollar sign and actually after i use this for a while by context all these substitute characters actually make pretty good sense for me let's go ahead and run basic fairly large program so it takes a little while to load Using this makes the, the Model 33 seem fast, and that was miserably slow. All right, so let's type a program in. And with all the figures shifting, uh, it's going to be a little difficult. So figures, one zero for line 10, space, and then go back to letters, and we'll do a for loop. For I, okay, now I need an equal sign, so I'll do blank E. I echo a quote, double quote. That to me, that's uh, equal sign turn 90 degrees, let's say. Now, if you had the uh, international keyboard, or excuse me, the international type basket, there is an equal sign in that one. Um, for I equals, and now I need figures, one, back to letters, two, back to figures, five. All right, I'm still in figures, so I can type 20. I need letters, print, I need figures for a quote, and then letters, line, figures, quote, semicolon, and back to letters, I, and let's see, let's do times two, so that'd be blank asterisk. Figures 2. So it's going to print two times the line number. Alright, figures 30. Uh, letters. Next. I. Alright. Again, by context, for I, you know that's got to be equals there. It's not a quote. Um, I times two, um, it, it works after you use this. It's actually not too bad. go back to CPM, the system command, and you can do anything you would normally do in CPM. We need to look at the stat for how much disk you have to read. So basically I can use a vintage computer, I can use CPM all basically normally without having to modify anything about that by having this interface in between even though this keyboard and pipe basket doesn't really support everything I need. Let's take a look at um, error correction, for example. Let's say I wanted to do um, a stat disk. So I type stat, and I need to type DSK colon. But let's say I type DSG by mistake. Okay, so I need to delete the F and the G. 
Now on a hard copy terminal, you tend to use delete over backspace. So delete doesn't exist on this keyboard, so it's blank D. So CPM echoes the G that was deleted. Blank D again, it echoes the F that's deleted. So now I'm back to the D. So I want SK figures colon. And this will tell us all about the disk drive and its characteristics. But as you can see, um, the, the keyboard escape sequences work pretty good for giving us the, uh, the few keyboards or the few ASCII characters that aren't present on the keyboard. Let's try the control C. I guess this program doesn't respond to control C. Well, we'll wait and let it finish. You'll see the control C pop up after the program. That's the way it happens when the program doesn't take the control C. There, you see the control C I was typing finally took it. All right, well, that does it for this video. So it's not. Uh, convenient using this, but it does work. You can use this uh, Model 15 teletype as a console for a vintage computer, just like you could use the 33. That's even slower, but it is a heck of a lot cooler.